beautiful Montreux Quebec, about an hour's drive north of Montreal. Le Circuit Montreux is set in the Laurentian Mountains. The autumn colors and the mist provide the background for the final race of the Export A Inc. Formula 2000 series. The competition has been intense all season long, and the series championship is still undecided, with four drivers still having a shot. Based on numbers, the favorite is Ken Morello, number 33 of the JH Racing Lucasfilm team. With one victory, two seconds, and two third place finishes, he holds the points lead with consistent top five finishes. A second place finish virtually ensures the Californian of the championship today. Second on the points list behind Murillo is number two, Christian Van Dahl of the Export A Inc. racing team. With a first, two seconds, and a third. He's driving what many feel is an inferior chassis to Murillo's 1990 Swift DB6. But this victory in race three at Shannonville gave him a good chance to win the points crown. Following Van Dale is the dark horse of the campaign. This is number 78, Bobby Carville of the Shockwave International Racing Team. With a first, a second, and two thirds, but several other top tens, he's called Mr. Consistency by the media. This victory at Mostport Park three weeks ago lifted him into contention for the season championship. And last but not least, Jim Vassar, the driver who appeared to have this series sewn up just two races ago with four victories, enters the last race as a long shot. Two disappointing finishes in races seven and eight because of equipment failure and an accident have made his chances of victory slim to say the least. But remember, this is the driver who has smashed track records all season long, and he is undoubtedly the fastest driver in the field. It's all come down to one race, so get ready for the grand finale of the Export A Inc. Formula 2000 series. Bonjour, mon nom est Mark Bunting, accompany de Larry Nuber. Bienvenue au circuit Montremblant pour la dernière course de la City Formule 2000 Export A Inc. The run for the championship comes down to this final race. One of four drivers can win it today. Absolutely. Now, Jim Basher won all those races early in the year. Christian Vandell still have a shot, but two people have their destiny in their own hands. If Bobby Carvel or Ken Marillo can win this race today, they will become the champion. It's been raining all day. The track is wet. Who is favored and uh, who will this hurt? Well, ironically enough, we discovered that Bobby Carvel is the only Formula 2000 driver who has ever had a wet start before. I don't think anybody really is favored or had a, had a disadvantage in this weather. That is definitely the unknown element today, the rain. Let's take a look back at race eight at Mostport. We had a huge field. The complexion of this race was altered right from the start. No surprise Jim Vassar had been the fastest qualifier, but this shocker, Jim Vassar pulls into the pits after the final reconnaissance lap. It was discovered it was only a plug wire, but his teammate, Ken Marillo, inherited the pole. It was Ken Marillo taking the lead from the start at Mostport, being challenged though by Van Dow, Gimal, and Carville. Watch for Carville speaking about Bobby in that pink, black, and white number 78. Ken Morello takes the early lead here and leads reasonably comfortably, but Carville pulls a surprise move on Christian Vandell on lap number one. There you see Morello. Watch who's running second already. And in retrospect, when you think about it, this may have been the most important lap in Bobby Carville's entire season in his quest for the points championship. So it was Bobby Carville running strongly, as was Martin Guimont, number five in the black and blue car in third place. Carville certainly has to be pleased with his performance up till now and has to be feeling reasonably optimistic, but this race is a long ways from over and the biggest surprise for him is yet to come. Meanwhile, Jim Vassar finally made his repairs, comes out on the track, but at least one lap down, his chances for the championship probably gone. Not only was Vassar having trouble, the leader, Ken Barillo, dropped back. He had a spin on and was back into 11th place and had some catching up to do. And that surprise for Carville, he finds himself suddenly in the lead. So that terrific first lap that he pulled off, that big surprise, really pays off dividends. And so it was Bobby Carville, after several top 10 finishes, finally winning a race, number eight at Mostport. And most importantly, he takes momentum into the finale. <laughs> 
Now, the weather here this weekend is playing its biggest role in the past two seasons in Formula 2000 racing. Windy and showers, lots of them. We're with Cindy Armstrong, chief steward of the series, and Cindy has been raining off and on all day long. Under what conditions would this race have to be stopped? We only stop races for conditions of what we call force majeure. That means that either there is an incident that damages the track property such that it can't be repaired and therefore we have to stop for safety reasons, or in the case of rain, if the rain is coming down heavily enough to cause it to be a safety factor. The way it stands right now, we have no problem, but if we had puddles lying across the track and things were aquaplaning, we would be in trouble and we would stop it at that point. This is our third visit to Lurcher Qui Mont Tremblant. Larry, let's take a look at the course. As you can see, a little bit more than four kilometers around. Christian Vandel holds the track record one minute and 39 seconds. The first view that you at home will see is this shot from the outside of the front straightaway. Now, this is not the longest straightaway on this course, but nonetheless still a very critical part of the racetrack. The second camera will begin to show you the extreme weather conditions that we have here today. Between turns one and two, there's a leap of faith. You can see the cars are going downhill at a very rapid rate of speed anyway, but under these wet conditions, certainly a factor that will attract the driver's attention. Camera number three picks up the cars and drivers going through a reasonably complex section of the racetrack. It begins with this S corner, and you're still going downhill all the way, then through turns five and six, more downhill, very important not to scrub off speed here. Camera four will show you the carousel, a wide sweeping right-hander, one of the slowest corners on the course. Camera five is on the long back straightaway, punctuated by a kink, but today also accentuated by these weather conditions. You can see how difficult the vision potentially is going to be for the drivers today, particularly those who are trying to follow. Camera number six is at the uh, top of the gulch coming underneath the Firestone Bridge. The, the drivers here are in a very uh, narrow part of the race course, and they have to be very careful once again not to scrub off speed because the slightest loss of speed here will really hurt their lap times. Camera number seven follows the cars around Namoro. The cars and drivers are now setting up for the short front straightaway. The drivers say that is the key to a good lap here at Mont Tremblant. Our regular feature, the Motomaster Mile Award, will be given out today, and it will be quite a feat to get the fastest lap at Trombla in these conditions. The fastest lap in qualifying was turned in by Martin Guimot. He's on his home course and expects to do well. Jim Vassar, some are saying, can he run in the rain? We'll find out today. Christian Vandal of the Export A Inc. team, he likes the rain, and he's third on the grid. Number four is Scott Maxwell, qualifying well in his Swift. The championship could be decided in row number three. Bobby Carvo and Ken Marillo start side by side. Mathematically, those are the two people with the best chance. Priddle, Arbus, Casalino, Gord Collin also running off the top 12. 16th on the grid is a name we don't usually see this high. Wade Lee out of Calgary, Alberta. 18th on the grid, Bobby Haggard Jr., the rookie this year. And coming up, sitting 25th on the grid is a name we all recognize. Jacques Villeneuve for the Leadfoot team. We'll be back with the start of this Export A Inc. Formula 2000 race after this. Just moments away from the start of the race, the final race of the Export A Inc. Formula 2000 series, the championship on the line. There's Jim Vassar. Look at the eyes peering to his right. The light turns green. The race is underway. It's a fairly good start, at least initially. On the outside, there is Scott Maxwell. There's not quite enough room to maneuver. There are three abreast going downhill into the first and the second corner. Gimo holds on to the starting grid position one, for which he qualified also in the rain. Look at the spray fly up. It's amazing they can see anything. There's Bobby Carville, number 78, in third spot. He's moved up from fifth on the grid already. Scott Maxwell is in fourth. And, and Vassar is already challenging Martin for the number one position. You can see the different lines, how squirrely the race cars are, not nearly as smooth. Carville looks to the inside of Jim Vassar going into that left-hander, but Jim Vassar turns him away. Number five in the black and blue car, Martin Guimau maintains the lead. Number 12 is Jim Vassar. He's in second. 78 is Bobby Carville in third. 
looking downhill, down to the bottom of the goal. Jets turn number 11. You see the leaders come through, and that was right there where Mike Skelton crashed. So, and we have a near spin. That is Jack Harvest as he uh, makes the left-hander turn number 11. Mike Skelton crashed very hard there in practice. Our leader, Martin Guimau, is from the area, La Carie, Quebec, and he knows this track very well. He's raced in the rain very little, however, so this should be a good test for him. On the other hand, another gentleman who has raced in the rain, although not that often in a Formula 2000, is Christian Vandell. Christian runs fourth behind Gimo. There goes Vasser. Bobby Carver runs third. There's Christian, and then Scott Maxwell in the red number zero. Jim Vasser, number 12, wants to dispel the myth that he and his teammate are not good in the rain. We'll see what he does here. He's sitting second. There's Bobby Carville, number 78, in third at this point. And speaking of Carville, he may be the calmest among the four drivers who have a chance at the points championship. As we look at our leader, number five there, Martin Guimau, number 12 is Jim Vasser, Marillo and Vandell, and the other drivers who have a chance. They seem a bit uptight before the race. The possibilities are endless. Let's try to simplify it. Well, the points championship, it's very easy to explain, right, Bobby Carvel? Can you give it to us in 10 words or less? Uh, not in 10 words, in about uh, 10 scenarios, maybe. Bobby, it is true, however, that you and Ken Marillo are in control of your own destinies. That's right. If I win or if Ken wins, uh, it's a we're, there's a three-point spread right now between us. If I beat Ken, it's a four-point spread between first and second. I would win. If Ken wins as a leader, he would he would cushion his his lead and win. And beyond that, there must be a hundred different scenarios to unfold this final championship standings. But there is one very interesting one that you were sharing with me. Tell us about that. Yes, if somebody other than Christian wins, and I finish second, and Ken finishes third, we would tie for the championship. The tiebreaker would go back to the number of first place finishes, which were also tied at one. It would then go to the number of second place finishes, and we both have two. The number of third place finishes, we both have three. Still tied. Still tied. And then number of fourth place finishes, we would beat him by one. And the NFL thought it had the advantage on North America on this tie-breaking system. <laughs> So there you have it. It's a little confusing, but suffice to say, Bobby Carville and Ken Marillo are the main contenders. Oh, Christian Vandell is way out of the groove, Mark. There he is sliding right in front of you. He appears to have a flat left tire. You can see it going down on the ground. He has lost three positions. He was chasing that man right there in fourth position, and he had high hopes for the points championship, but he could be in trouble. There he is, coming out of the mist, Christian Vandell. Here's our leader. Number five, Martin Guimau, followed by number 12, Jim Vassar. Here's 78, Bobby Carville in third. Vassar appears to have a faster car than Guimau, but he's really being very cautious in these extremely wet conditions. But he is all over Martin. Uh, and here's Christian finally coming into the pit. So, boy, a very, very disappointing move for him. Well, John Hayes has removed some body work. Oh, Christian begins to pull away. Now there's some confusion. He definitely does have a flat tire. Unfortunately, the championship hopes of Christian Vandal have ended. Mark, he must be thinking, how else could this season have ended? Here's the man that most people thought would win this points championship this season, but he has been beleaguered by poor luck all season long. And now here in the final race, finally, officially, it is over. So Christian Vandal's hopes for the points championships have ended, but here he comes back on the track. And interestingly enough, he's in front of the leaders. Here's a... Uh, Guimau, number five, going by. Vasser's right behind him, and Vandal's in front. And some might ask the question, hey, he has no chance at winning. Why is he doing this? Well, he is a racer, and there is some pride involved, but there's also a difference between the prize money of 10th position and back to 20th, where he would probably finish if he stayed in the pits. Okay, these are our leaders after six laps. Martin Guimau maintains the lead. Jim Vasser's in second. Bobby Carville is third. Scott Maxwell, fourth. Ken Morello up to fifth now. And our Motormaster Mile update, again after six laps, sees Martin Guimau with the fastest lap here at Tromblas so far. One minute, 47.833 seconds. We'll be back with more exciting Export A Inc. Formula 2000 racing after this. Back at Mont Tremblant, there's our leader, number five, Martin Guimau. As we take a look back, in third spot is number 78, Bobby Carville. He is in the best position right now among the drivers who have a chance at the championship to win. He's in third, Murillo is back in fifth. And if it stays that way, Carville's our champion. Meanwhile, the battle for the lead continues to rage, and now it's becoming a big forest fire. There goes Christian Vandell. Now moving to the inside, Jim Vassar gets the edge on Guimau, going into the right-hander, and Jim Vassar takes over the lead for the first time. 
Artaki Mall did well to hold on faster for as long as he did, but faster in his 1990 Swift finally gets by him, and he's our leader, a familiar position for him. Well, through the spray at Nemro and the white green trim number two, that is Christian Vandal. Remember, almost a full lap down. There is Martin Guimau. Guimau comes around, and Guimau almost loses control as he rounds that corner. Now, there is Vasher, the leader. He can still win points, but Bobby Carvel has to finish worse than fifth, and Ken Marillo lower than sixth. Vasher needs other drivers to finish poorly in order for him to win the championship, but as of now, he is our leader. Oh, there is Guimau. Guimau is off the track. He was concentrating on trying to catch Jim Vassar, and he found himself off into the marbles, as the racers call it. Here comes Christian Vandal. He's at the back of the pack here. Let's remind you, Vassar is our leader, and there's Greg Priddle. Greg Priddle, we understand, was in the uh, pits, and he's also a lap back. And there is Bobby Carvel. He's in a very nice position in this race and in this season championship right now. There is Guimau. Guimau has not given up yet. Rounds Nammer one more time, and he slides that car through the corner, almost dirt tracking through it, and that's the biggest difference between him and Vassar today. Vassar has been very smooth, and there is Jim. Now, in this situation with the points championship up for grabs, the points standings in the race for the championship almost gets more attention than who's winning the race, and that's the subject of this week's Firestone Facts. These days, it seems like every racing circuit has its own system of tallying points, and certainly Formula 2000 is no exception. Now, this system is a little bit Formula One in that only your best 75% of your finishes count toward the season's total. That means eight of nine races. And the system is also a little bit card Indian that two thirds of the competitors are awarded points at the end of each race. The system is devised to reward a couple of outstanding performances and also to compensate in the event that you have bad luck in a couple of races during the season. 30 points are awarded to the winner. Positions two through six are separated by three points each, very important this weekend. And then seventh through 20th, uh, the difference is separated by just one single point. Now, this system can create some very strange and dramatic endings. For instance, if this were a straight Formula One system awarding points to only the top six finishers, Jim Vassar would be leading the points. But instead, 20 people get points after every Formula 2000 race. Therefore, Vassar is ranked only fourth among the four drivers vying for the season's points championship in this finale here at Trombon. And that is this week's Firestone Fact. And now back to this wet, misty track here at Tromblon. 78, Bobby Carville goes by, as does Scott Maxwell, zero. Number 10 is Patrick Carpentier, the 19-year-old out of Joliet, oh. Quebec, getting by Maxwell there. He passes him. Scott Maxwell almost losing total control going through Namoro. Now, the drama builds because if those two red cars side by side right now, both... He must maintain that position in front of them. Maxwell has now gone by Carpanche. They're having a great battle. They really are. Uh, both of them come on very strong here in these very wet conditions at the end part of the race. But the fact that they are battling with themselves so much may work to Carvel's advantage. They're paying more attention to each other than they are to him. And running in sixth position, there is Ken Marillo. Remember, he came into today leading the point standings. Perhaps he's been waiting. If he's going to make a move, now is probably the time. If the race were to end right now, Bobby Carville is the champion. Marillo has to catch up. Well, remember, the difference was three points, but there are three points separating every position, two through six. Carville knew he had to finish ahead of Marillo, and he's there right now. He's got a couple of positions lead, but still, this could go either way. There's our leader, number 12, Jim Vassar, gunning for his fifth victory out of nine races. Let's go back to second spot. Here's Martin Guimau, number five, going by. And back in third, Bobby Carville in the best position right now to win the points championship. Number 78, he flies by right there. And Ken Morello, he is still back in sixth position. He has two positions to make up, and time is running out. These are the standings after 14 laps. Jim Vassar continues to lead. Martangi Mall is second. Bobby Carville looking for the points championship in third. Maxwell and Carpentier. And the Motomaster Mile update after 14 laps sees... Christian Van Dahl now with the fastest lap here at Trombla, 1 minute 47.450 seconds. We'll be back with the final dramatic laps after this. We're back at Trombla. Moments ago, let's take a look at what happened to Gord Cullen in turn three. He spins out, hits the wall rather hard. 
and his car cracks up. Now we're back live as a car's approach Namro. There's Craig Piddle on the right. And Priddle turns right into David Webb. A big surprise there. Craig Priddle apparently didn't see David. And uh, both cars continue under their own power. Tough day for the Export A8 team, though, however. Number 44 on the right there is Steve Jalabian waving by Bobby Carville, who's in third spot and looking for the championship. And should he win that championship, he would be the first American. Oh, we have another incident involving an Export A8 car. That's uh, Christopher Fayon, who got out of control on the outside of Namoro. And poor Christian Vendel came around with nowhere to go. As Vassar begins his last lap, as I began to say, this will be the first American to win the Formula 2000 championship since R.K. Smith did it in 1985. Let's set this up with the race and the points championship on the line. Jim Vassar, number 12, is our leader. Martin Guimau, number 5, is right behind him and still driving hard. He has a chance. And remember, he's been off course, but where is Carvel? Carvel was running in third. He's still not in the picture. Is Bobby Carvel missing? Now, he was in third a lap ago. He needs to hold that position or at least fourth. That is if Murillo stays on the track. Where is he? There he is, finally. But look how close Carpentier is to him. And Maxwell is right behind the two of them. Bobby Carville must maintain his position. He has to stay on the track for this last lap. He has the championship. There is Carpentier behind him. Scott Maxwell, zero. There's Ken Murillo. Now, Carville can afford to give up one position, but no more. It looks like Basser's going to win this race. He comes around and wins for the fifth time in 1990, but he will not pick up the championship. Kimo, a very well-deserved second place, but is our champion rounding Namrel. There he is. Bobby Carville, 1990's Export A Inc. Formula 2000 Series champion. The winner of this race is Jim Vassar. He won five of nine this year. Martin Guimau came in second. There's Barbie Carville, our points champion for this year. Patrick Carpentier was in fourth. Scott Maxwell came in fifth. Six to Ken Morello, disappointment there. He was never able to make his move for the championship. Casalino, then Wade Lee, his best career performance ever, an eight. A disappointing day for Christian Van Dahl. However, he does win the Motomaster Mile Award on lap 12. These are the final series standings. Bobby Carville is our champion with 181 points. Ken Morello just four points back. His teammate Jim Vassar, a point back from him. Then it's Van Dahl and David Webb. Can you, I mean, realistically, can you believe it? Oh, boy, I tell you, it has been un one incredible season. I just got to thank my guys. They did an incredible job all year long. The car was perfect, and all I had to do was drive consistently. Think back Christmas Day last winter, okay? You knew you are going to run Formula 2000 this year, but did you think that in Christmas 1990 you'd be the reigning champion? Boy, realistically, I knew it was going to be tough. We wanted it so bad, and we worked hard all year for it. Uh, not to say that the other guys didn't. Uh, they ran into some, some bad luck along the way, and we stayed clear of the luck. Ken, uh, I guess it's got to be disappointing so close and, uh, and so far. Yeah, well, you know, everybody did a good job this year, the team, and the effort with Jonathan, and uh, sorry I fell a little bit short for him, you know. It's just kind of tough out there in the wet. I couldn't see for a while, and I finally got my visor clear, and it was, it was a lot better after that. But so, uh, I'd like to say congratulations to Bobby. He did a good job this year. Uh, the first five, six laps of the race, were they as exciting in the cockpit as they were every time you went by the start finish line? That's all, of course, we could see, but it looked pretty exciting. Yeah, I couldn't. You guys could probably see more than I could with the, <laughs> the spray and the rain and, and all, but. Uh, I was just concentrating on being smooth, and they were keeping me posted on what was going behind me because there were certain circumstances that needed to happen for us uh, to win the championship with Ken, or even myself, an outside chance. Sure. The most impressive Formula 2000 driver this year, Jim Vassar, wins again. On his right, the runner-up, Martin Guimau, and series champ Bobby Carvel was third. So our nine race series eventually came down to one final wild and dramatic race here at Montremblo. In the end, Bobby Carville is our champion. Mark, you know, there are those out there who may say, yeah, but this championship came at the expense, the mechanical breakdowns of others, but hey, that's racing. But for his part, Carville demonstrated a couple of things. Number one, his abilities behind the wheel, but also some very heady thinking. Make no mistake about it, he did win this championship. 
Going into the series, we knew we had a lot of good drivers and the possibility for some good races, but I don't think we really expected what we got. It was a great series. A storybook ending. We couldn't have written this. I mean, four drivers vying for the championship right down to the final race, and then this weather this weekend simply added to all that drama. We all had a good time this year. We have a great production crew. Larry, it was uh, good working with you. I learned a lot, and meeting all the people involved in this series, we had some fun. The crew really did give us some great shots, and they were put to the ultimate test this weekend because the conditions were abominable. They came through with flying colors. And we want to thank our viewers for following us all this year. We'll be back again next year on TSN. Until then, I'm Mark Bunting with Larry Newber and the rest of our production crew. Thanks very much for joining us. So long for now.